To this day, I'm still processing Recording a, is on. a whole bunch of information that I received. Um, and uh, look, to anyone who hasn't taken psychedelics, I would not recommend it for the faint of heart. It is, it is mm. well, or, or certainly not at that dose. That's insane. Uh, but it is, it can be very challenging, particularly if you have a whole bunch of shit you haven't dealt with, which I did have, and I never had dealt with it. Um, but it was remarkable. It was, it, it was almost like having, almost like having 10 years of psychotherapy in seven hours. It was absolutely crazy. Well, and so when you came out of that, you, you, you instantly knew that these different paths for you were the right. I mean, is that when you decided, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm about to bounce from investment banking and do my own thing. I mean, was that part of the process? No, I mean, the, the thing is it, it, it took about, it took about 18 months for, I mean, I mean, it had a dramatic effect. I mean, look, not, not to say I was a bad guy. I mean, I was, I was, I always try to do the right thing by my clients. I never try, you know, I, I was always being told off by my MDs, Hey, why are you not screwing these clients harder? And, and my response would be because, because we're not in the business of ripping people off. We're, we're, you know, we have to make money. I get it, but I'm trying to build a business, a franchise. And if I, if I screw my clients, I won't have them next year. So why would I do that? You know, so yeah. it wasn't that I was a bad dude. I, 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 I was the opposite. I was actually very good to my clients. Um, but it dramatically changed my my belief system. And it's like anything, you know, when you work in a very toxic environment, you build this mm -hmm. facade and you put on this mask. Mm -hmm. um, not not a COVID mask, obviously, a uh, metaphorical <laughs> mask. Um, and you build this this personality that 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 thrives in that environment, which, by the way, is not a good personality to have. So it kind mm -hmm. of it kind of allowed me to shed that. But but yeah, it had a radical effect on me. And I, I realized one of the most one of the most powerful things I realized was not getting angry, not getting pissed off is a superpower. It, it really is because in, in an environment full of hotheads where everyone's losing their shit all the time, uh, you know, to to be able to stay calm is is incredible and and i think it certainly helps with my trading as well um i think it it it, it really it, it has changed my approach to everything and don't get me wrong you know i get pissed off you know, you know i still get agitated and i still get i get i get annoyed when 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 shit happens that that i'm not happy with but the old me would have got pissed off and angry for a couple of days or a week or two the me now post my heroic jesus heroic dose maybe that doesn't even sum up what the hell i did my extremely heroic <laughs> dose I might get pissed off for five, 10 minutes and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll basically be back to myself within, within 20, you know, so it's, it's kind of shortened that whole cycle of bullshit that we all go through, which is incredibly powerful. And, um, to be fair, I haven't done it ever since, uh, because it was such a fun experience. Um, I suspect I probably will do it again at some point. A, a friend of mine actually in the UK is, has just been approved, um, to offer, uh, psychedelic therapy using MDMA. Uh, psilocybin um, and I believe LSD, but I need to double check, which is amazing. So this is the first time in the UK this has been made available. And uh, wow. so I think I think with a doctor with me rather than me alone in, in a room, uh, wondering whether my wife is going to begin to question my sanity when she f opens the door and finds me crawling to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, set and setting, right, Manu? But this is the funny thing. I, 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 because I guess my ego was quite a lot bigger than it is these days. I was like, nah, you know, hey, I'm an investment banker. Yeah, I can, he can, this guy can take five grams, Terrence McKenna, whatever, you know, I'll, I'll take five X there. Um, but, but, you know, here's the irony. Had I taken a smaller dose, it wouldn't have kicked me in the nuts so hard. It probably wouldn't have changed my personality enough to do what I did. And I would probably still be working at a bank, hating my job every single day. Wow. Wow, that it's it's you followed you your highest passion and you went with it. That's that's really inspiring. You know, some of us are you know we're afraid to take that leap because of X Y Z, but doesn't it feel good when you do it? You just know it in your gut. The gut brain tells you to do it, and you just execute on it. Yeah, look, look it, it, it's 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 incredible, but but often you still have that awful feeling, thinking, "Holy shit." Is this going to work out? Is this going to get a play? You, know, you, you always have doubts and, and it's, mm -hmm. it's your ego coming back to try and take control of, uh, of, of, of your higher self. But, you know, ultimately, if I look at the way I've, I've dealt with the last two years, it's, it's crazy. I, I've, I've actually, I mean, look, you know, I guess we've all had moments where it's a little bit depressing when you see what's happening and, and, and you see the consequences of, of, of the government actions. But on the whole, I think I've, you know, dealt with it pretty well. I've managed to keep, you know, myself, my wife, my kids, um, 
in a much higher vibration than than most of my friends who unfortunately yeah. have been living in fear and and i i i, I, I i'm I'm grateful for the effect that psychedelics had on me because otherwise I would be that guy wearing five masks hiding under my desk, which thank God I'm not. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, that just, just to point out, we have, you know, just a few folks on this call, but just, just, to just, just ask yourself, everybody on this call, how amazing it is to just not be in fear. We're, you know, we're angry and we get mad at, we get more frustrated at the stupidity of it and, and maybe saddened and angry at some of the higher crimes. But imagine if we really believed that there's, people were getting sick and there's little viruses floating around that are infecting people and we need to wear masks. I mean, it, that's a whole other level of stress these guys are dealing with, you know? So I feel like we're pretty blessed that we kind of just naturally uh, just aggravate. I mean, it's sort of just through a synchronicity that we're even all on this call. I mean, uh, I just, I just forget, man, who, I don't even remember who invited you. It doesn't even matter, but it's, uh, it was, it was, it was you. I, I was, well, but, um, yeah, so I think I think I think we were on the we were on the dollar vigilante, uh, crypto vigilante chat. Sorry, and um, and uh, I can't remember what I can't remember what it was. I, I asked a couple of questions on on Monero and uh, was just getting some utter bullshit answers. And I think you might have actually given me some decent ones. And um, yeah, I, that, that's kind of when we, when we started oh, speaking. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was probably a couple of years ago actually. And then. Um, yeah, and, and and here I am today. So uh, so look, it's it's nice to be with and and you know don't get me wrong, I love I love the dollar vigilante, I love the greater vigilante. I think they're they're, they're great mediums, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of dickheads in, in, in that channel, and there's a lot of a lot of egos. Jesus Christ. Um, and 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 look, I I was a huge fan of Jeff, but I don't know what the hell's happened to him. He's um he's gone from kind of um being the good guy to wanting mass exterminations. I don't know whether this is just yeah. him having some kind of breakdown or some shit, but it's like that's not cool, Jeff. I don't understand why I want innocent people to die. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's just gone crazy. I don't know. Well, you know, I, I, I thought about that too because, you know, the, the first couple of times – because I, I haven't watched his videos in a long time, but I, I was no, – I, 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 actually, I actually stopped watching them because I, I was just getting pissed off with some of the things yeah, he was saying. Yeah. You know, forget the the investment advice or whatever because there has been some good ones. But, you know, at first I just took it as he was so frustrated about waking up, you know, I would, you know friends and family or whomever that were resistant to it. That, you know, all right, fine. You want to take it? Go die then. I said, all right. He had an outburst. I get that. But now it's like a joke where he's like, yeah, I get the Rothschilds. There's just too many idiots out there. Why don't we just uh, take them all down? It's like, I don't know, Jeff. If that's your version of stand up, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not I'm not digging it. You know, I don't I don't like seeing, you know, 19, 18, uh, 20 year old dropping dead when they should be in the prime of their life because they're running down the field playing soccer and they had a vaccine, you know. Yeah, it, it's nuts. And, and unfortunately, his, his view on NPCs and what have you um, is nuts. I mean, you know, not everyone is awake. And at some point, everyone was an NPC, right? I, I used to be, we all used to be until we realized. Yes. It. So yeah. you, you can't you can't hate people for not having the same knowledge base as you. Um, but uh, but look, you know, again, look, I, I think he's done. I can't hate the guy too much. He's done some some amazing work and he's woken up a lot of my friends. So, you know, uh, you know good on him for that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was also going to ask you, just because we were on topic of flow state and psychedelics, is if uh, did you ever get a chance to check out that remote viewing course from Gerald that I sent you? I did. I did. I thought that was excellent. But, but yes. bloody hell, it's hard work. It uh, really it's, is. <laughs> it, it's really it's exhausting. Absolutely exhausting. But I mean, I, I, I guess it's something I need to keep practicing. But but no, it's I, I thought it was very good. Yeah. Yeah. I um. I'm thinking about going through it again. Yeah, the exercises were very deep. Initially, I, I when I wrote them into him, I was saying, you know, I'm starting to fall asleep during these, you know. And he said, that's okay. It's working your subconscious mind. He's like, well, now I might go through it a couple more times, and I'll try to be more awake and see what happens. But um, we also have a uh, Sabril on, who's a remote viewer. And uh, Sabril, you sent me that hit, but I remember that hit. Um, Sabril, you there? I am. Hello. Hi, Manu. It's uh, what a pleasure to hear your story. Um, Hi, Zabro. How are you? I can tell you about psychedelics. So I always tell, you know, people are always trying to t take this or that. I go, I I'm already there. <laughs> I'm looking <for> <laughs> <laughs> I am looking for stuff to bring me back down to earth. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, I, amen. Yeah. <laughs> so what Matt's referring to is, um, so as you know, the, I speak with a group of interdimensional beings that have been coming to me since I was like five years old. And they've been trying to prepare people for what, what is coming, which is our now time. So that's a lot of years of preparing. And 
throughout that time, they've given me a lot of visions, a lot of, uh, you know, I do a lot of out-of-body travel, so I've actually, you know, gone to seeing things. And it's a lot of what's happening right now. But what I shared with Matt, what I think he's referring to, is I have a Discord server, and in it I put a lot of the, the readings as as I can transcribe them because there's so many of them. And I'll, I'll share the one that I have from... Um, it was November 27th of last year. So if you listen to the, the last podcast I did, episode six, uh, I speak about it there. But here it is briefly. Uh, November 27th, 2021, Landall, who's my spirit guide, told me, soldiers on a beach dying and being sucked into the sand, turning and burning as their ashes float away in the breeze. This is what is coming. And I said, actual soldiers? And he says, yes. Buildings burning, unrecognizable cities. Doesn't mean the whole planet, but you will see it. Fighting in the streets, fire in the hills, blood in the water. And I sent that to uh, to Matt because he doesn't always, he's so busy, he doesn't get a chance to, to check on things. I said, you know, wow, this these are the things when you're a remote viewer that you see things and you, you don't want them to happen. But here you are being shown things so that you can have the opportunity to have clients all over the world. So I give them the information and say, here's, you know, make of it what you wish, but here's what I received on this day. And I've been mentioning in the channel that I've got a couple contacts in Ukraine that um, got prepared the best they could, but at some point, that's that's all they can do. You know, a couple of them are elderly, so you know they they are where they are. So it's um, as you said, it, it 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 can be, it's a little bit of a bummer sometimes to see the future when you see scenarios like that. But to bring the room back up, <laughs> the one thing that Landall has shared is how did I put it one time? We're going through when, when you go through a storm. It's very dark, and it's uh, there's a lot of devastation, especially if it's a hurricane force. But there's always that tail end, right before you hit the light. And I feel that we, like I think you said, Manu, you know, we're still going to go through a period of time. But then after that, we're going to see this renaissance of um, of change, and that's what I'm really, really ha hanging in for, and trying to give that encouragement to everyone to just is prepare the best you can hang in there this a, a lot of this is going to come to pass and, and be brought to light and then we're going to get to experience just some people call it you know 5d living moving you know bashar mentions it right moving up a vibration it's exciting if we can get through it so i've got i've got a question for you and and, and look I, I i think we will get through this you know i, I think i think um I think there's there's too many of us um, that have woken up to this, and and I and I think I think they need they need a, a critical mass to be asleep uh, and to follow their narrative, and I don't think they have it anymore. So it's, I don't I don't think they have the capacity to push this this reality in the direction they wanted to. But uh, but but I've got a, I've got a question for you. So I, I spend a lot of time working with 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 deep learning artificial intelligence, and. What what is what is really insane about this, and what completely blew my mind in 2017, 2018, when I first came across this, was effectively when you have a a, um, uh, a deep learning AI agent or, or, or several agents, you essentially or I show it data, and it works out what I am training it to do. I ask the data scientists on a regular basis, how the hell does it work out what I want? And they don't have an answer. They give me mathematical formulas and they give me uh, scripts of, of Python, which mean nothing to me because I'm not a dev. And it kind of dropped, you know, crossed my mind. I wonder, is there some kind of consciousness or is there something? Um, you just read is... my mind. Yes, consciousness. That's the word. It, because this is, I mean, it, it's, I can't ask the question of the developers and they all thought I was insane. So I stopped <laughs> asking questions. But is, it, is there some degree of consciousness to these things that, that we build? Yes. Uh, without going into, the, we'll be here another hour or two, but it's a great question. It's like, um, how can I put it? So 
uh, a lot of people you're you're becoming aware uh, for how, I don't know how for how long that now everything is of a vibrational nature. Uh, I've discussed this before on one of our calls is that you you know when you go into a party and the vibration is just wonderful and everybody is hugging and loves each other and it just you just feel like you're just in this bliss cloud and then you go to some parties that are just uh it's very negative in nature and it, you can feel it so if you want to call it a consciousness at some point um that group of of beings are pulling their energy into the room and creating a consciousness so yes you're giving birth to an entity so to speak and i don't know if that answers your question Yes, 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 it does, actually, it does. Yeah. Um, even, get... even though, even though what, what you're speaking of, and this is a great question. I'm going to, if with your permission, I'll ask my spirit guide because I want to know. Sure. Oh, <laughs> I'm just giving the information, the best that I'm receiving it right now, is it's like, um, it's almost as if you're, you're giving birth to something. And even though it, the, the programs are ones and zeros, right? Mm. So it's completely artificial in nature. But because human humans have put their their consciousness into it, ah, see, see how that works. So it, it's almost like um, you know how they say that if you wash your car, if you take really good care of it, all of a sudden it works better than if uh, John would know he works on cars. <laughs> Those cars work better than the ones that that are kind of neglected. It's it's similar in nature. And I'm, I'm not quite explaining it very good right now, but it's it's almost as if the intention that you're radiating into something takes it, and then to, and it makes it their own. So we have to be careful with the energy that we project, even with the into, in, intent. Yes, okay. intention. Intention rules the world. I always tell people this story: you can see a beautiful tree and admire it and say, gosh, that tree could feed so many people. It's an apple tree. It's so good. It's so this. But you can also take a branch down and lay it into a baseball bat and kill somebody with it. So is the apple tree in and of itself positive or negative, good or bad? It is the intention behind the use of it that makes sense. Sabrina, that, yeah. that does, yeah, that makes that makes total sense. I just wanted to add to that. You know, um, when a corporation's about to go under and it almost fights for itself, right? It, it, it's you know, I mean, let's be honest. The Catholic these institutions have been around longer than every individual life uh, on the planet, and I do think they have at least somewhere they have those almost like their own consciousness they humans get born into them and then they just you know the catholic church is there it's going to be there tomorrow it was there 100 years ago and they almost take on a life of their own so you know what is consciousness we we are you know projecting the movie reality out and then filtering it back and we are the only observers of, of, of the screen but are we holding the whole film out all at once and seeing it all from that perspective and i, th and I think that's you know what those that we say are a little bit more aware they're seeking that try to do but yeah i i, I I'm, I'm with you on that um you know consciousness affects card games and and there's been many experiments i forget what the institute was they were just working on it could could consciousness and intention uh even affect the random probabilities in certain distributions of uh, cards or numbers that people were picking and yes they did so exactly um, even that experiment where I, i'm sure you, you've all seen it where that they're they're shooting the photons through um and it's the intention of the person operating the machinery that determines the outcome how's that yeah we're, <laughs> i mean that is yeah. mind-blowing so if that person's operating that machine and saying it's going to hit this 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 there's more of a probability of that happening than if there were no intention put into it whatsoever. That's fascinating. And this is physics. Mm, yes. Yeah. Wasn't that just basically consciousness affecting reality? Yeah, yes. Yes. Con this is uh, your, your intention. So I think what we're chatting about is it, the intention that you put into something can shape it can steer it is the best way i can describe it almost in a spooky way in some yeah. ways 
you know. Yeah. I love it. I love it because it just it just shows it's everything I've always imagined since since I was, you know, since childhood is that uh, you know, these birthday wishes, right? Everyone says birthday wishes, but keep them to yourself because there's another secret to share is unfortunately a lot of times we get really excited about things that we want to do and you'll tell people you'll say oh i'm going to do this i'm going to do that and haven't you found in your experience sometimes you'll tell let's just say the wrong person the person that says oh that oh that's crazy that's that's never going to work and it ends yep. up influencing you a little bit Det you know depending on how hard it gets into your mindset that's the power of energy energetics it's, it's it's really just reality is consciousness. That's there really is no sticks and stones. It seems out there. I mean, it's 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 at its deepest level. And I guess I just to just lean into this, man. As we're wrapping up here, I just wanted to talk about uh, some of the variables or what you've been doing with with your indicator because I know you're you, you know out of any indicator that I've studied, this is this is this one's different. You're not just taking price action and doing some derivative or finding some oversold or value. This is um. You guys are doing some really interesting things in what would be seemingly unrelated to markets, right? And I just found it fascinating. I just wanted to hear more about that. And, and are you guys factoring? I mean, you guys are putting your conscious intention into it. And how, how has it evolved since uh, we last spoke? Yeah. So, so yeah. Look, absolutely. So, so essentially, we if if you if if I if I give you a just a really brief summary of of um, of, of kind of AI, because again, it, this this is probably one of the most abused words in in financial markets. Everyone has AI, but the truth is, most people don't. Um, but if you if you think about what most people use, most people when they talk about AI, are actually talking about algos, uh, where like a human would hard code um, a a framework, you know, a more complex version of if this then that. Um, the, the 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 next evolution of that is, is is what's called machine learning, which has been around for for probably about four or five decades. Um, what's really important to understand about about um, about deep learning? This is this is something that's quite new, and it only really began to evolve about about a decade ago. And and the reason that it evolved was was twofold. One was you know back in 2012, we didn't really have enough data. We we now have shitloads of data, and the second was processing power. So if you if you if you think about Moore's law, so the, um, the the number of transistors on a microchip double every every two years and the price halves. Well, in 2012, that kind of stopped because unfortunately you ran out of atoms in between the transistors, so the microchips couldn't work properly. And and that was the same point in time, I think it was 2012, 2012, 2011, I think, when NVIDIA repurposed the graphics processor for parallel processing. And, and the reason that's relevant is because if you have a string of instructions being processed uh, by a CPU, you can take a thousand GPUs and you can slice that string of instructions into a thousand pieces and, and process it a thousand times faster or process a thousand times more instructions. So that's basically where we we, we suddenly, uh, after, after decades of me hearing these amazing things about AI uh, and nothing materializing, suddenly in 2017, 2018, we began to get these systems that were incredible. Now, one of the issues you have, even with deep learning, is human bias so so a lot of people uh use a, a form of of, uh, of deep learning called reinforcement learning the problem with that is that that you've got to be exponentially smarter than any human being alive to 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 basically create a framework of this reality um to to, to essentially help the ai so so what i mean by that is that things like reinforcement learning are amazing uh if if you're building something like a video game so if you destroy an asteroid or you destroy a spaceship there's one less quantum of each one of these things and therefore you can define what the outcomes will be but it's very different in financial markets if i buy one eth that doesn't change the price of eth yeah if i buy a million ETH, of course it does but if i buy one it does nothing so so there's loads of issues with this and, and one of the other issues you have with with ai is is essentially what's called the grounded truth so the grounded truth effectively is the way you frame the question how are you asking the question so the ai can answer it so looking at all these things i kind of thought okay cool this is this, this whole subset of, of artificial intelligence is actually really useful, but actually how do we get to a point where we can take human bias out of this as much as possible? And that's where I came across uh, anomaly detection. So effectively with anomaly detection, it's it's slightly different because it's not really a predictive model. You know, there is no grounded truth. We're not asking it a question. We just throw data at the AI and it comes back and tells us that there is something not right with, with subsets of it. So if you look at a data set, um, effectively, what you'll have is you'll have some kind of clustering around the mean. And by the way, I'm being 
I'm being, I'm, maybe I'm oversimplifying this. I'm not sure, but but just just uh, to to make this a short conversation. Um, and what happens is is that outliers typically are points of data that that are that are so far from 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 this this mean that they were likely caused by some other cause. Um, and and that's basically what it picks up. So so what it does is we have one target vector. So for instance, Bitcoin, and then I added about 126 other vectors. So there's a whole bunch of on-chain data. There's a whole bunch of financial market data. There's a whole bunch of data from from other digital assets as well, excluding mean coins, because I, I couldn't I couldn't get my head around how they work, and they seem to be anomalous 100% of the time. So they they were giving some very very weird results. Um, and essentially, what what this this was an exercise in is that if you think about deep learning, deep learning is amazing for when you have very very rich data sets. So the, if you think about the difference between, between between machine learning and deep learning, machine learning um, is really good at looking at thousands or tens of thousands of data points within a data set. Deep learning is is incredibly good at looking at hundreds of millions of data points within a data set. So the inferences deep learning makes are exponentially better than 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 um, the machine learning. The other thing which which I re realized was that actually, if you have very fra fragmented data, deep learning is really powerful for making sense of data that's that's not very coherent. So I took end of day data, which quite frankly is pretty useless for doing anything predictive, certainly within the next 24 hours, and and that's what I used. So we have one data set, um, oh sorry, one point of data, which is the Bitcoin price, and then we have 126 context values, which again are are one single data point per day, and from that the ai was was able to make predictions about uh, about essentially large asymmetric events but also actually it's really good at, at potentially picking out reversals now sadly it's only accurate at the moment about 70% of the time for bitcoin um for some of the other assets it's actually much better weirdly for cardano it's about 75 80% um and essentially this is just the first version of this um, I'm, I'm working on rebuilding and retraining the AIs with hourly data, and so far, about 95% of the time, it is it accurately predicts volatility events, which is absolutely astonishing. So, th this is this is really interesting technology. I think, I believe, we're still the only people in the world that have used this. I don't think anyone uh, has actually implemented this for uh, crypto. And effectively, I kind of made this as a risk management tool. But in, you know, being entirely honest, I've I've realized actually you can probably trade on this and and I'm looking to build algos potentially on this as well, which is another thing I'm I'm kind of thinking about doing. So one of the other outcomes of my trip to the States was a lot of the funds uh, I spoke to want uh, essentially execution algorithms for, for FX and for crypto. And they don't just want ones that can execute trades without creating too much market impact. They also want ones that generate alpha, i.e. make money. Mm -hmm. um, so... I can't do that at the moment within the businesses I have because it's a huge conflict of interests. Um, you know, I can't be trading in the same markets that I'm actually, you know, showing people. So I have to set up a new entity, but that new entity effectively will be taking algorithms and trading strategies um, based on, 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 on AI and effectively creating something pretty awesome, you know, again, that doesn't exist today. So um, I, I will I will share more details with that as and when I have them. I, I only really had the thought about doing this um, over the, the course of the last week or so. But but I I think it could be pretty awesome. And, and you know, likewise with the the anomaly detection, which which I'm I'm kind of giving away to for free for anyone that is interested in getting the signals. Uh, the only thing I ask in return is if you have any thoughts or comments and how we can make it better, how we can improve it. You know, how we can maybe display it in a, in a in a more easy to understand format. You know, please. Let me know, and, and we will we will change it. Um, I want to try and get algos out as well, probably in the next I don't know two three months, just to kind of beta test it and see how they work. What will be radical about the algos is they will be essentially created and managed by by artificial intelligence. The same AI that powers the anomaly detector will, will power the algorithms as well. So they'll be they'll be dynamically managed, because one of the problems you have with static algos is that when the dynamics uh, of a market change or when you see a structural shift, they stop working as efficiently. Well, we can basically we can basically use AI to, to change that radically, and um, so yeah, it's it's exciting stuff, and and uh, I think there's there's a huge amount of of, uh, of of improvements we can make to this, and I think it'd be pretty beneficial for those that are that are serious about trading markets to to have more consistent returns. Yeah, I mean, one of the ways I was using it is you know, I'm I'm coming in, I'm looking at the context, and it's like you know. I'm so let's say it's just more of a sideways. It's going to be a range bound day. If I see that your indicator is going to show no extreme, uh, you know, anomalous or volatility events, 
then it's like, okay, great. Everything I did. And then I get one more little thing at the end. Now I can take that nice little zone fade, maybe more relaxed. Um, I remember there was one day that kind of jumped up, uh, hit both sides of the range. It was like a couple, it was a week ago and your anomaly square was higher than average. So what were some of the, the, the color codes? So obviously red would be, you know, a high, very high probability for a volatility event. And then just, you know, green or is very low, but then in between, right? I mean, how would we, I guess the question exactly. I have is how, how do we read the percentages? Am I looking too much into that? Should I just be green and red or what's the middle ground with the yellow? Yeah. It, it, okay. That, that's a really, that's a really good point. So, so one of the things, and, and again, this is not a black box. This is, this is, this is the way we build this is very transparent. And, and the reason I made it transparent is because I'm not, I'm not a quant and I'm not a developer. So I need to be able to understand what the hell we'll build. So one of the things that I will, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get done probably in the next couple of weeks um i'll chase up with the dev guys but 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 effectively so all, all those 126 context vectors that we have what i want to do is i want to basically not just have a percentage but i want to within that percentage show which one of those things it is is it is it the on-chain data if there's a let's say a 35 percent probability of volatility event it, what, you know what is that based on um is that based on just the on-chain data is that based on the financial market data is that based on other cryptos and I think that will help add another dimension to it as well, because if it's financial market data, I'd probably pay a little bit less attention to it than if it was on-chain data. Right. You know, there was there was the, the last time that we spoke, you you talked about something that you know was data not, from 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 a, from a source that I was actually quite surprised was you were using uh, the fractalized structures of human faces in some type of capacity as one of your inputs. I mean, that that blew me away. Can you can you go on about that? Yeah, sure. So this 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 is really the secret sauce, and I, I get yelled at every time I, I talk about it. But anyway, um, we didn't hear it. Guys. We didn't hear it here. But but, but yeah, yeah the, the, this this is why I thought that this would be of interest to you because I, I kind of just thought this is this is actually quite funny. But yeah, so so effectively, there's um, there's a great website called thispersondoesnotexist.com, and this was a piece of technology I believe invented by Google in about 2017, and it uses what are called GAN AI. It's a network. So so GAN is uh, generated adversarial networks where you have two AIs, or actually you have two two banks of lots of AIs. One creates imagery, um, and then one determines whether it's real or fake. And and this is this is used to create uh, very realistic human faces, uh, essentially. And um, the thought process that that we had was to say, well, shit, if the geometry of a human face is fractal, well, financial markets are fractal. Can we repurpose this? This 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 GAN technology for financial network markets, wow. you know, is is there is there scope for this? And 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 again, at, at the beginning, we kind of looked and thought, are we are, are we all going crazy, or is there some value to this? And yeah. we kind of messed around with it. And initially, the results were awful. Um, it didn't do anything. And then we kind of thought, actually, rather than trying to build a predictive model, can we use this for post processing um, the output of a predictive model? And that's exactly what we did. So. For that purpose, it's amazing. It's incredible, and 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 this is kind of how we fine tune and refine the outputs um, that 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 we get on the signals. So basically, that's yeah, that's that's the process that that we kind of use. So we use we use essentially fractal geometry um, to to overlay on the the actual outputs of the Iris AI. That's very interesting. You know, that's. It's unorthodox, you know. I, 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 I'm enjoying your stories where you, you know, with your colleagues that are uh, maybe uh, they were more a little bit more rigid or by the books, you throw something out there and uh, rock their boat a little bit. That's uh, that's, that's awesome. I, look, I, it's 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 because I mean, look, I I, I worked in markets most of my career, and um, and and I, I guess it's I, I think the other issue is is, is the fact that. Um, I guess I have a slightly different view to, to trading these things than most people do. So, so yeah, we have some some interesting conversations. But you know what? I, I look, some of the things that I kind of suggested have not worked. Uh, but, but you know, for instance, the 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 the, the financial uh, GAN has worked really well, and um, using the fractal overlay for post processing has been extremely powerful. And um, certainly with the hourly feeds, is is absolutely incredible. Um, it, it really is incredible how how this seems to work. Um, and the best thing about this is that there's none of my human bias in it. You know, I haven't told it what good looks like. I haven't told it what bad looks like. Um, mm. All I've done is present it with with data. And by the way, I presented it with crap data as well. This is not this is not high quality data. This is this is basically crap data that is all publicly available. Mm -hmm. 
but but look, this is this is just stage one of of, of what I intend to do with this. I, I think there's some um, I think there's some, some 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 real mileage in in turning some of these out, outputs into again into algos as well for trading purposes. And um, it's it's one of those things that because it, it you know here's the thing when when you're trading in in a market. It's not static, you know. If you're trading in, you know, whether it's an FX market or whether it's a it's a digital asset market, people will be looking at what you're doing to the market and how you're trading, and they'll be learning against you, and they'll be basically trying to undo whatever you're doing. So if you're doing some kind of arbitrage in FX, you know, I, you know, when I when I first got into FX um, in was it 2003, um, you know, I, the, the, I sit next to one of the traders, and he would manually arbitrage euro dollar with 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 euro sterling and and pound dollar, which is crazy. Because you had like five seconds, six seconds. These days, you have a hundred milliseconds. Um, and in 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 crypto, it's kind of nuts. You have maybe seventy-two hours to do the same kind of arbitrage trades. It's absolutely insane. Well, well, folks, um, Manu, um, we're getting towards the the close here. I don't want to take any more of your time here, but um, I just have I have one final question. Um, sure. And anyone else, you know, on mute, ask Manu, whatever you want here. But I, I wanted to ask you, what are your, what are your, some of your colleagues, uh, you know, I know, you, like you said, they're not really into the DeFi yet, but they want to be. What are their thoughts and what are your thoughts on Polkadot and Theta? Do you think that these big institutions are going to go into those? So, so look, I, I think the way in which they look at this is, is quite interesting. It's, so the, the way I look at at, um, at at my portfolio, or the way I look about how I invest in any asset, you know, whether it's digital assets or not, is is really more about the utility and the value. You know, mm -hmm. is there something? You know, it, you know, obviously, look, one one of the big things obviously is the network effect, right? You know, if no one uses the tech, then it doesn't matter how good it is, it, it's not going right. to do anything. Um, but but notwithstanding the network effect, you know, you look at the 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 tech behind it, and you look at the um, you look at how novel it is. These guys have weird metrics so they'll they'll have restrictions and not be able to buy anything with a market cap of less than 25 billion or 50 billion or, or, or 100 it's very odd how they work so even if they're aware of it they may not be able to buy it wow okay yeah J just yeah. because of, of, the, of, of the way their risk framework is set up but look i'm a big fan of polka dot i um i i wish it was 75 bucks which is kind of what yeah. i hope to be rather than 19 but that's what i thought but, it was gonna be yeah i would have took out at the top so i um but then no, I, I, look i'm a big fan um i i i am still a big fan of my favorite mm -hmm. stable coin aka cardano um i wish it would do something <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, hope it, I hope it does um yeah. I, I look i i think i think the tech is great i really do and and, mm -hmm. and again i was blown away by solana but the whole hundred thousand transactions per second turned out to be bullshit. So that was slightly irritating. But mm -hmm. and do you uh, have you heard of Theta? Do you know anything about the Theta Theta network? I, I I do, but not really something I've got a, a a huge amount of understanding about. I mean, this is you know, media is not really my cup of tea. Yeah, I mean, uh, polka dot and that are one of my uh, bigger bags, and you know, I uh, I dug it because I really understood, you know decentralized video sharing peer to peer i said hey the live streams are awful these days i mean all these youtubers are complaining about the quality uh, you know so i was like okay i'm i'm, I'm going to go with that so yeah like you said the best we can do really is um go with something with value and, and uh hope the network effect takes place because trying to guess what the the big institutions are going to do all the time uh it's tough unless you got some insider info like we got from you today so <laughs> well, look, I'll, I'll 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 try and get some more substantive info next time I uh, I meet with these guys. So I'm going to another event in when is it? It's in I think it's in May in Amsterdam. So so yeah, I'll I'll let you know what I when I hear from these guys. But um, I love it. I love one, 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 one final thing I want to say actually is quite mm -hmm. funny. So I um I, I I'm a big fan of Raul Powell. I I think he's 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 actually um a really really interesting chap actually but um so i i i watch a lot of the interviews he does he's he's actually quite an interesting reverse indicator because when he goes crazy about something that's normally time to sell but anyway yeah right issue. so there's a there's a hedge fund manager called hugh henry who i used to absolutely love during the last financial market crisis in 2008 um just because he was very outspoken had some very interesting views and um uh, you know, he was a contrarian, and and so I thought he was quite cool. It turned out he was actually just batshit crazy, which is which is interesting. But what's hilarious is that this man is so anti crypto; it's unbelievable, and he 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 hates crypto with with every single bone in his body. And 
he hates NFTs. And, and so I thought it'd be quite funny to make a piece of artwork with his face uh, made of Bitcoin. So I made the piece of artwork and I, I emailed Ra Pal, expecting him not to respond. He did not. I emailed Hugh Andrews saying, hey, you, I made this a bit of a joke. I know you hate crypto. So here's an NFT for you. Um, and weirdly, I, I, I sent him a message on, on, um, on Instagram, of all things, and he responded in about 30 seconds and said, you know, you're the third person today to talk about NFTs. Um, anyway, I sent him a link and I, I, you know, I stuck on a rareable. I thought nothing of it. 24 hours later, someone bought the NFT. And I'm thinking oh the only God. person that knows this bloody exists is this, this guy. It's very weird. So, yeah, it's very odd, very odd story. So he, he bought one of my pieces of artwork that I made as a joke, I believe. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this he takes it with a grain of salt. Maybe, maybe there's hope for him, though. I, honestly, you know? I, I, I have, I have no idea. I really don't know. I mean, I, I mean, look, I, I don't make artwork to sell. I kind of just made NFTs just for the mental process of understanding how they are to make NFTs. But, um, but yeah, I, I find that quite funny, though. That is, that is. Manu, thank you so much for coming on, man. This was, I, I'm blown away every time we get to speak. And then everyone else, hey, too, that contributed. Sabril, too. I mean, it's just, this is such a great group. And uh, I'm blessed to have you guys all in my life. So thank you so much. Matt, thanks so Any, much for uh, having me on. Yeah, absolutely, Manu. All right, guys. Godspeed. Take care now. All right, speak soon. Take care. Thank you.